Is Bernie Sanders the Jewish face of anti-Semitism? Guess what the pro-Hamas protesters are now calling for? They want a university president to be beheaded. I kid you not. The Biden administration is reportedly working on a plan to allow immigrants from Gaza to come here. What could possibly go wrong? More Trump derangement syndrome. This time, Google refuses to run a Trump ad due to policy violations. We will play the ad for you. It's hard out there for black conservatives. I will explain why all of that and more. Now, to keep this show going, please patronize our sponsors. If you don't, well... (coughs) I said throw down, boy. We know where you live. Welcome to We've Got a Country to Save, hosted by the black face of white supremacy and brought to you by my friends at investwirefi.com. Invest in America like I do and by Freedom Chat. Speak freely and message privately with Freedom Chat. Download the app today and subscribe to my Freedom Chat channel at Larry Elder for exclusive posts and never before seen content. We also want to thank Epic Times, Old Glory Bank, Patriot Mobile and Birch Gold. Now, as to the Trump trial, the criminal trial in Manhattan. I'm not going to say there's a two-tiered system of justice, even though there is a two-tiered system of justice, because I, for one, cannot come up with a single example. President Biden said that he stored the documents in filing cabinets that could be locked. All the stuff that was in my home was in filing cabinets that were either locked or able to be locked. Just not true, John. Uh, This report from the special counsel includes photos of a box uh, just sitting in President Biden's Delaware garage. And that open, unsealed, damaged box included, according to the special counsel, highly sensitive, top secret material about the war in Afghanistan. Another claim, none of the documents were highly classified. None of it was high classified. Didn't have any of that red stuff on it. You know what I mean, around the corners? Also not true, John. The special counsel's report says that the president possessed multiple highly classified documents that were indeed marked as being highly classified documents including some marked as top secret slash SCI, one of which contains highly sensitive info about military programs and another that contains info about sensitive intelligence and sources and methods. They were clearly marked as highly classified. Biden's own handwritten notes from his time as vice president also contained highly classified info. And then the third claim, he did not share classified information with a ghostwriter on a book he was working on. I did not share classified information with my ghostwriter, I did not. The special counsel did say that explicitly. Mr. Biden shared information, including some classified information from those notebooks with his ghostwriter. So there it is in black and white. I have an objection because 10 of the 29 electoral votes cast by Florida were cast by electors not lawfully certified. I object to the votes from the state of Wisconsin, which were not, should not be legally certified. No debate. Mr. President, I object to the certificate from the state of Georgia on the grounds that the electoral votes were no not... Debate. There's no debate. And I object to the certificate uh, from the state of North Carolina. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina. Um, I object. I object to the certificate from the state of Alabama. The electors were not lawfully certified. We're embarrassed by it, but I think it's a disgrace. It's just really a very, it's a very sad, it's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. President Trump emboldened after revelations the Democrats helped pay for that now famous dossier. It was made up and I understand they paid a tremendous amount of money and Hillary Clinton always denied it. According to a source familiar with the matter, the Clinton campaign and Democratic National Committee hired the firm Fusion GPS for opposition research in 2016, which concluded before the election. Christopher Steele, a former British spy producing an explosive document, including some salacious but unverified information about Donald Trump and his potential ties to Russia. This was the Democrats coming up with an excuse for losing an election. Clinton campaign officials declined to comment today. I'm not going to go there. Wouldn't be prudent. (laughs) Hi, folks. Do you trust this economy? What if you could receive a strong fixed rate of return that's not correlated to the stock market or the Fed? And what if you were in control? You could turn your income on or off, compound it, whatever you choose. What if your interest was compounded daily, you were paid monthly, and there were absolutely no fees? And what if you could have peace of mind because there was no attack on your principal if you ever needed your money back? Well, folks, there is an investment with all of these features. 
Investors all over the country are earning a high fixed rate of return with Y Refi, and they don't care about what happens with the stock market or the Fed. And best of all, they receive their statement every month with no surprises. Would you like some more information? Just call 877 invest That's 877 invest Or log on to investyrefi.com. That's investyrefi.com. Why Refi? Do well by doing good. Now, as to the pro-Hamas protesters, two Republican congressmen have an idea what to do with the pro-Hamas students who've been arrested for breaking the law. Six months of community service in Gaza. Let's see them hoist the trans for Palestine flag on their soil. (laughs) Quick question. Is Bernie Sanders the Jewish face of anti-Semitism. Common sense fails one more time in the United States Senate. Bernie Sanders blocks my resolution that simply says anti-Semitism on college campuses. It's not just wrong, it's not just evil, it's despicable. I don't understand what he doesn't understand, but at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to step up for our Jewish students. God bless you. The last time that you and I spoke, you declined to say whether you believed Israel was committing a genocide. Have you, uh, are you prepared to do so Look, now? that is a media question that is asked all the time and it you know, generates... people care time. about that no, question. No, 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 no. Look, no, what people care about is stopping Netanyahu, Netanyahu from the massive destruction that he is bringing forth in Gaza right now. Keep it Jewish down. Can we exchange the squad for the hostages still held by Hamas? Government to oppose student organizing under the guise of combating anti-Semitism, which they perpetuate openly and frequently. We woke up this morning to the disturbing news that D.C.'s Metropolitan Police Department had raided the GW Gaza Solidarity Encampment and assaulted, pepper sprayed, and arrested the nonviolent student protesters in the middle of the night while you were sleeping. This is all happening because those who refuse to stop the ongoing genocide in Gaza think they can arrest and brutalize their way out of this situation. This is drone video showing students training to confront and resist campus police. You see, the left doesn't care about the pro-Hamas protesters unless it makes it more likely that Trump retakes the White House. Then they care. How the campus protests are playing out over there on the presidential campaign trail. Donald Trump are trying to use the issue against President Biden. When you look at these protests, these images, do you think to yourself, wow, this is a real in-kind contribution to Donald Trump? The unrest is now threatening to become an election issue. They're clearly trying to create echoes to 1968 and the anti-Vietnam War, anti-war protests. The 1968 analogy does not bode too well for Democrats. In 1968, Richard Nixon celebrated the non-demonstrators and was elected to the presidency. And the title of David Brooks' piece, Why the Protests Help Trump. 1968 protests should serve as a warning to today's Democrats. Is 2024 doomed to repeat 1968 or 2020 or both? You write in part, this is history as a cautionary tale. This is a risk uh, for President Biden. Let's hope that we don't have the full 1968 going on here. Let's see if they're now going to elect Donald Trump for, I don't know, maybe the last election in American history. If so, good job. Way to go. So would President Biden be okay speaking at a college where protesters are waving the Palestinian flag? 
protests? Would the president welcome peaceful protests during those commencement ceremonies as we've seen elsewhere? But you see the president do this all the time. It doesn't matter where he is, where he's speaking. It doesn't matter if it's a commencement. It doesn't matter if it's one of his events. He welcomes peaceful protests. And you actually have seen the president engage in that process. So if and he raised Palestinian flags that we've seen at the University look, of Michigan the elsewhere, he would welcome that when he speaks. The president has said two things, right? And I have said two things. We understand how deeply painful this moment is for many, many communities here in this country, for many Americans. We understand that. And we also understand that all Americans have the right to peacefully protest. And we accept that right and we understand that right. It is part of who we are in this country. Let me let me let me um, talk to our team. I can I'll circle back if there's more I can share, but I'll have to circle back with you on it. Not sure if they spoke about the Olympics. I'm happy to check with our national security team on that uh, to, to follow up with, but I don't have any more assessment of the Olympics uh, at this point in time. Whether, whether he has, so it hasn't been discussed whether he has a position on whether it would safely be able to go on yet. I I, I don't have anything more other than I, I haven't had much on it, but I don't have anything more than I've had on other days on it. So, uh, I will have to circle back on that one, but I. I I don't think I have anything more for you on it, but I don't know that I have more for you on it than that. Meanwhile, pro-Hamas protesters at George Washington University are calling for the university president to be beheaded. That's right. Beheaded. What have you can see? This one is a doozy. Just another day in today's American academia. This raises a question. What do some of these terrorists have in common? Six men have just been charged with conspiracy to murder in connection with a plot to blow up buses and subway cars in London during the summer of 2005. The six would-be suicide bombers charged are Mukhtar Saeed Abraham, Ramzi Mohammed, Yasin Omar, Manfu Asaidu, Adel Yahya, and Hussein Osman. Since their capture, the big question for Scotland Yard has been, what exactly is it that links these six individuals? <laughs> what common denominator motivated this seemingly random group of young men? It is puzzling, isn't it? Yeah. You know, but here to help us untangle this mystery, please welcome international terrorism expert, Dr. Franklin Robertson. Welcome, doctor. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. I gotta tell you, you know what this case reminds me of, Doc? Uh, a more successful bombing attack in London during uh, July of 2005. Mm. You mean the suicide bombings carried out by Mohammed Sadiq Kahan, Shazir oh. Tanweer, Abdullah Shazid Jamal, and Hasvib Hussein, Kurt? I believe that was them, yes. Uh, now, weren't the two cases kind of similar? Similar. Uh, in what way? <laughs> Maybe both involve buses, subways, uh, suicide bombers. You know, Kurt, it's tempting to try to concoct these conspiracy theories to explain these incidents, but most of those just don't hold water. But, I mean, it could be a conspiracy, couldn't it? I mean, like last August when 10 people were arrested in London for trying to blow up uh, those U.S.-bound ah, airplanes. Yes, this? yes. You mean Ahmad, Abdullah Ali, Tanvir Hussein, Umar Islam, Arafat, Wahid Khan, Assad Ali, Sawar, Adam Khatib, Ibrahim Savan, Wahid Zaman, Kusar Ali, and Moran Hussein? Yeah, it does sound like that, yeah. Uh, but, Doctor, you can't tell me those guys didn't have anything in common, I mean, besides a uh, desire to blow things up? Well, if you say so, Curtin, what might that be? <laughs> Okay, well, um, let's see. Uh, were they all young males? No, one was a woman. All right, that's a dead end. Okay, okay, well, how about this? Were they all from the same hometown? No, they were all from different London suburbs. Not so easy, is it, Kurt? No, no. Did any of them have eating disorders? Those can make you crazy. Okay, yeah, you're right. Now, funny you should ask that, because we just learned that none of them would eat pork. So I don't know what that means yet, but... Okay. Well, uh, how about this? Were they all going by their original names? No. Kurt, Umar Islam was born Brian Young, but he changed his name after he converted. Converted? To what? Uh, Islam. Oh, geez, another dead end. <laughs> Everybody knows Islam is a religion of peace. Yeah. So that doesn't work. Oh, look, we've spent thousands of hours studying this, and frankly, we're stumped. Well, Doc, 
you know, you're the expert, and I guess if there were something that linked Mukhtar Saeed Ibrahim, Ramzi Mohammed, Yassin Omar, Manfu Asaidu, Adel Yahya, and Hussein Osman. Or for that matter, Mohammed Sadiq Khan, Shazi Tanweer, Abdullah Shazi Jamal, and Hasbib Hussein. Yeah, if they had anything linking them, you would have discovered it by now. That's right. 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 We, no, we would have. So in the meantime, why don't you just let the detective work be done by the detectives? You got it. Thanks for joining us Thank today, you. Dr. Robertson. Can you weather the storm? Can your savings weather an economic storm? Think about what you've put away for the future. Inflation can render your cash worthless. Real estate can crash like in 2008. Economies built on a mountain of debt can fall like a house of cards. There are very few physical assets you can invest in that can stand the test of time. Gold has withstood as a valued form of money for millennia. It's why people are flocking to it now and why Birch Gold is busier than ever. Through a little-known tax loophole, Birch Gold lets you convert a retirement account into a tax-sheltered IRA in physical gold. And the best part, it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. To learn more, visit LarryForGold.com and claim your free info kit on gold. Let me ask you this again. Can your IRA or 401k weather an economic storm? If not, call the people I trust, Birch Gold. Visit LarryForGold.com and secure your savings today. That's LarryForGold.com. Meanwhile, at Columbia, students demand they be given passes in their classes because the genocide in Hamas has left them traumatized in their asses. <laughs> I graduated from Brown University in 1974. My favorite courses were poli-sci, economics, and international relations. One of my profs was a senior official in what became the CIA, and another was a senior aide to General George Marshall. They were Cold War warriors who loved America. Fast forward, according to the Washington Examiner, anti-Israeli student demonstrators at Brown University claimed a victory when the school reached an agreement to hold a vote on divesting from Israel if the protesters tear down their encampment. Brown would be the first university in the United States to hold such a vote. As part of the agreement, five students will be invited to meet with five members of the Corporation of Brown University this month to argue in favor of divesting Brown's endowment from companies profiting from the alleged genocide in Gaza. A vote will be held in October. Genocide? Is Israel committing genocide in Gaza? Uh, Senator Cotton, I'm, we don't have any evidence of genocide uh, being uh, created. Uh, so that's a, that's a no. Israel's not committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, we don't have evidence of that. Reportedly, the Biden administration is working on a plan to allow immigrants from Gaza to come here. What a great idea. Importing a bunch of anti-American, anti-Israel Jew haters. Let's preview exactly what will happen in the event that Biden pulls this off. Let me walk you through the past seven days in Europe. This week in Stockholm, three elderly women in their 70s were stabbed in broad daylight on the streets. In London, 
Four people were stabbed in a time span of just 42 hours. In Paris, hundreds of Afghan migrants took to the street to riot. And in Brigolo, also in France, yet another church was burned down to the ground. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just a few incidents in just a couple of days on our beautiful continent. But we all know that these incidents aren't incidents anymore. If there's one thing that's for sure, is that we know, and our governments also know, that there is a link between mass migration and crime. In the Dutch city of Dordrecht, something interesting happened the other day. They announced, and this is a small city in the Netherlands, in my home country, that a new asylum center will be put in that little town. And what did the municipality do? They said, we are going to offer citizens who live in the vicinity of this center a thousand euros to take extra safety measures. Our new reality in Europe consists of frequent rapes, stabbings, killings, murders, shootings, even beheadings. But let me be clear about one thing. This did not used to happen before. This is a newly imported problem. Rich Lowry recently wrote a piece called Don't Become Sweden. He said, and I'm quoting, to conjure an image of contemporary Sweden, think less of Ikea and more bombs blowing up outside fashionable Stockholm restaurants. Sweden welcomed more than 150,000 refugees from the broader Middle East in 2015, an act its leaders framed as a moral triumph. Now, given the country's population of roughly 10 million, that was a huge number. He writes, fatal shootings have doubled over the last 30 years, and on a per capita basis, Stockholm has 30 times the gun violence of London. Other than that, now about the protesters, even Bill Maher has a red line. Now can I talk about American propaganda? Because there was a rally in Dearborn, Michigan, it's a large Muslim population. Uh, chance of death to America. I feel like we've, we've passed something here. You know, I mean, the left has gotten mad at me for many years for talking about Islam. I try not to do it too much because I know it makes them go crazy and I've made my point. But it needs to be talked about now. When you start trying, chanting death to America in America, I mean, I got it. Charlottesville was real bad when they were chanting death to the, what was it, Jews will not replace us. But on American soil, here's the, the Tarek Bazi is the <clears throat> organizer of this. Uh, this was at the end of Ramadan, International Day of Quds, Al Quds, which was pronounced originally by, he said, this is why Iman Khamenei, that's the Ayatollah Khamenei. Remember him, yep. the Ayatollah Khamenei? He's the good guy now. Uh, Khamenei, he would say to pour all your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Yeah, I heard this before. Not coming from America, but the great chastisement. We will chastise the infidels. But now it's coming from inside America. Sorry, got to talk about this again. He said, we live in one of the rottenest countries that ever existed on Earth. It's not just genocide, Joe, that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. No, it doesn't. I like our system. This is America, for crying out loud. Well, what about... And there are people who see me say, this, oh, he's a conservative now. I'm a conservative. I have not changed. I always liked America and thought death to it was bad. Well, how about... Speaking of Mr. Marr, sounds like somebody's been listening to what I said about whether these pro-Hamas college protesters will be getting their student debt loans forgiven, i.e. paid for by taxpayers. Hey, I am... This stuff is, I'm so insensitive about some of this stuff because, you know, when I read about the college loans, yes. you know, I mean, I mean, it's, I can't, where, where's the stat on this? Oh, Biden administration's student debt cancellation will cost a combined $870 billion to $1.4 trillion. That's, That's a lot of debt so forgiveness. Unfair. Okay, so Wait. colleges constantly raise tuition. Then the kids take out more loans. Then the government go, comes by and pays those loans. Okay, so my tax dollars are supporting this Jew hating? No, you I don't think so. The Did these students really chant Lizzo, Lizzo, Lizzo at these rather portly black female pro Hamas protesters? You can tell you ain't at Columbia anymore. Lizzo, 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 Lizzo. You fed up. You. F you.
And suddenly, guess who's pro-police? Al Sharpton. Now, you mentioned UCLA. We're, we're learning this afternoon that UCLA will return to regular operations tomorrow. The New York Times analyzed hours of footage from violent clashes on their campus last week. They say the video showed counter-protesters attacking students in a pro-Palestinian encampment for hours using sticks, chemi chemical sprays, and fireworks with little or no police intervention. As of Friday, no arrests have been made in connection with the attacks. Are you confident that law enforcement is doing enough to de-escalate these demonstrations and protect everyone on all sides of the violence? Because these were the counter-protesters that was against the Palestinians that made these attacks. We shall overcome. We shall over... Where the cops at? <laughs> Meanwhile... Here at Stateside, some of the items found in Hamilton Hall at Columbia after the cops cleared the place out. Let's see that dust fly with that broom. Get all that garbage out of sight. Oh, you don't go out Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Don't talk about I know what you're thinking. Old Great Aldersky, what would Ronald Reagan say? Now, now Reagan why did you to negotiate many times? Negotiate? What is Governor to negotiate? What is what are we university just... is a public institution? That's it's right. An important institution but the university for all of the... The, its own community and for the community of Berkeley that live around it. All of it began the first time some of you who know better and are old enough to know better let young people think that they had the right to choose the laws they would obey as long as they were doing it in the name of social protest. And this is the University of Alabama. On one side, pro Israel. On the other side, pro Hamas. But Joe Biden has brought the two sides together. They agree on the same universal bipartisan chant. And let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> what? White? Liberal student protesters encounter a non-liberal black student? Squad. Yeah, they just trashed the whole place. So this video is getting a ton of attention on TikTok. It captures the protest encampment at UCLA before the police moved in. The student who recorded it tried walking through the area and was immediately confronted by masked protesters. He's also our next guest. His name is Milagro Jones. He is a senior at UCLA. Good to have you here. And why don't you start off by telling us, you know, your T-shirt is, is sending a message here. So where do you sit in terms of the, your opinion about what should be the ultimate good outcome if we can get there? Yeah, so thanks for mentioning the t-shirt. Um, this is uh, from Christians United um, for Israel. And uh, my, my message uh, by wearing this shirt is basically that I, as a student, um, I have zero tolerance for anti-Semitism at UCLA campus, and I support the existence of a Jewish homeland in Israel. I was stopped by masked uh, anti-Israel protesters who mistook me for uh, someone of Jewish background. They said I was an Israeli agitator. They physically assaulted me on Friday. Um, the last time that I was on campus, um, they actually punched my brother in the head. Uh, they reached into their hoodie pocket and claimed that they had a weapon. So I just wanted to free my campus from these people, and I wanted to uh, give my, my other students an opportunity to be able to access the campus without segregation, without people telling us that we can't go to the library. And I just want to see a safe, beautiful campus where we can all learn and we can all come together for positivity, for education, and for love. That. Now, they trashed your campus. You know that, right? Um, some of the video you just referred to, I think we have that here. You mentioned last Friday. I don't know if this is last Friday or a few days ago, but watch here. You can take your compadres and y'all can get out of here. I'm a student at this school. Okay. That's the library that I that I use. That's Powell Library that I use. Would you like that's Royce Hall where I have like classes. Would you like to go in. to the library? That's Royce Hall, bro. Would, would you, like, would, to would, would you like to go to the library? I'm asking you if you'd no, like I'm to go. No, I'm asking would you. Would you? Would you? Oh, you want to walk somewhere? Yeah, I'd like walk to yourself walk to the library, bro. How about that? See, my daughter don't need no one to walk her because I can walk her, and I'm a grown man, so I don't need no one to walk me. Oh, did you make it to the library? 
classes that were in the library we end up having in Murphy Hall instead because these uh, violent protesters um, would not allow us to have uh, freedom on this campus. Uh, for now, my classes are canceled today. I'm hoping that sometime next week or very soon we can get back to normalcy on this campus. Uh, really, it's, it's about graduation time for a lot of students, and this is where we take grad photos too. So you can see the graffiti and everything. It's just defaced the campus, damaged property. Uh, they left a lot of mess behind tents and plywood and all type of things that other people had to clean up. So I just hope that we can get back to a state of normalcy at this campus. None dare call them racist. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are concerned about the invasion of privacy that is currently going on by the Biden administration? Biden's DOJ is invading individuals' private messages and targeting them based on their political affiliation. And that's why I partnered with Freedom Chat, a private social messaging app that, like me, believes privacy is your fundamental human right. Freedom Chat has variable end-to-end -end encryption, built-in screenshot protection, no storage of messages on their servers, and no commercial use of user data. I'm such a fan of Freedom Chat, in fact, that I have created my own private channel that you can subscribe to for exclusive content, including never-seen images, videos, and posts. Simply download the app, or if you're on Android, join their waitlist. Search for my channel and subscribe. No one can see the channels that you are subscribed to or the posts that you react to. It's your own perfectly curated private news feed. Speak freely and message privately with Freedom Chat. Download the app today and subscribe to my channel at Larry Elder for exclusive posts and never foreseen content. <laughs> what to say about this? Former Biden press secretary Jen Psaki says Trump supporters think Trump will die. I think there's two categories. I mean, there's obviously the Tim Scott category, as you said, that's embarrassing to watch, cringy. I've watched it many times. I think many of them want to be close to power. They also assume or have this thought in their mind that maybe Donald Trump will go away. Maybe he'll go to jail. Maybe he will die, not to be too morbid, but maybe, I mean, he's not a young man. Who knows what's in their minds? They think maybe I will be behind the Oval Office. Maybe I will be in the Oval Office. Meanwhile, Kerosene Maxine Waters says Trump is training right-wingers up in the hills so they can be ready if Trump loses. This is a man who we'd better be careful about. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the Justice Department and I'm going to ask the president to tell us what they're going to do to protect this country against violence if he loses. I want to know about all of those right-wing uh, organizations that he's connected with who are training up in the hills somewhere and targeting, uh, you know, what communities they're going to attack. I can no longer sit back and allow communist infiltration, communist indoctrination, communist subversion, and the international communist conspiracy to sap and impurify all of our precious bodily fluids. Now this Rev, in giving a speech supporting the re-election of Fulton County DA Fawny Lewis, had these rather kind things to say about Mr. Trump. When I saw this fellow come on the scene, this Florida fellow, mm -hmm. it occurred to me after watching him just for a short while, Bishop, that all of the, and this is what came to my mind, all of the resources of hell <laughs> all right. All right now. All right. has Thank been made you. available to this man. Mm. Somebody said on yesterday that, I believe it was Reverend Al Sharpton or someone on his show, that there's not a redeeming quality in the man. All right, all right. He is soaked and saturated with evil. All right. Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the force. Now, Google is refusing to run a Trump ad due to alleged policy violations. Hot Air wrote, and I'm quoting, I can tell you exactly what the violation is. This ad is targeted at minority voters, and it is probably very effective. Google can't have that, can they? Right before our eyes, we keep getting examples of domestically-based election interference, attempts to bankrupt Trump, 
attempts to put Trump in jail, constant propaganda from the mainstream media, vicious slander of anybody who supports Trump, and of course, censorship, end of quote. Without further ado, here is the Trump ad banned by Google. Hello, I'm with the Biden campaign. Yeah, yeah, I voted for Biden last time. That's fantastic. Is it? Everything costs more. Food, gas, rent. Okay, but Biden's helping pay rent for newcomers to America from around the world. You mean illegal immigrants? I'm struggling to pay my bills, but Biden's paying rent for illegals? They get handouts and I'm paying for it. But Biden can still count on your vote, right? Things were better before Biden. I'm voting for Trump. Make America Great Again, Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. Sigh. Make no mistake, and let's be crystal clear. If Donald Trump gets reelected, there is no doubt that he will try to stay in office beyond his four-year term. He will destroy this country, our democracy. He'll change the way we run elections. He'll attack secretaries of state, and he'll do everything he can in his power to stay in office. And the country that we know of today, we will no longer have. It's sobering, it's scary, but we have to take it seriously. This is a person that we have to take at his word. And so we have to do everything that we can between now and the election to strengthen, support our local election officials, uh, ask the Department of Justice to be prepared, and most importantly, to reelect, of course, President Biden. You'll never take me alive, coppers! More Trump is a racist from another MSNBC host because, implies Ali Velshi, former President Richard Nixon, who employed the Southern strategy, was also a racist, right? This is yet another big, fat liberal lie about Nixon. Contrary to what some may think, the former president is not that much of an anomaly in American politics. While he may be unmatched in terms of his narcissism, Trumpism is not a novel idea. The movement he ushered in is in line with the Republican Party's Southern strategy, a long-term plan developed in response to the civil rights movement that sought to exploit white Southerners' racial anxieties. It was a plan that Richard Nixon learned, leaned into for his political campaigns and for his presidency. You'll remember he used the phrase silent majority to refer to the white Southerners he was trying to court. And his call for law and order was a dog whistle opposing the protests and the marches that were common in the 1960s and early 70s. Pat Buchanan, an aide to Nixon, is the one who coined the term and created the so-called Southern strategy in order to get Democrats to vote for the Republicans in the South. Here's what Buchanan said, and I'm quoting him. In 1956, as VP, Nixon went to Harlem to declare, and this is Nixon speaking, America can't afford the cost of segregation, end of quote. The following year, writes Buchanan, Nixon got a personal letter from Dr. King thanking him for helping to persuade the Senate to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1957. Nixon supported the Civil Rights Act of 64, 65, and 68. In the 1966 campaign, as Buchanan wrote, quote, Nixon blasted Dixiecrats, seeking to squeeze the last ounces of political juice out of the rotting fruit of social injustice, end of quote. Riddle me this. Does that sound like a racist? Buchanan continued, quote, during the civil rights struggles of the 50s and 60s, Governor Orville Faubus used a National Guard to keep black students out of Little Rock High. Governor Ross Barnett refused to let James Meredith into Ole Miss. Governor George Wallace stood in the door at the University of Alabama to block two black students from entering. I draw the line in the dust and toss the gauntlet before the feet of tyranny, and I say segregation now segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. Buchanan notes, these governors were Democrats, all acted in accord with the Dixie Manifesto of 1956, which was signed by 19 senators, all Democrats, and 80 Democratic congressmen. Hey, boys, look what I got here. Hey, where are the white women at?
Buchanan writes, Bull Connor, the Birmingham Commissioner of Public Safety, who turned the dogs loose on black demonstrators in Birmingham, was the 1960 Democratic National Committeeman from Alabama. You can never whip these birds if you don't keep you and them separate. You've got to keep the white and the black separate. Let the law enforcement agencies, that's what you've got them hired for. And the governor of the state of Alabama handled it. All of this might be news to Mr. Ali Velshi of MSNBC. And contrary to what then-Congressman Keith Ellison, a Democrat, who was vice chair of the DNC, Alabama Governor George Wallace, who ran for president in 68, was a Democrat. This exchange took place in 2016 on a panel hosted by ABC's George Stephanopoulos, a former top aide to Bill Clinton, who failed to set Ellison straight. Unfortunately for Ellison and Stephanopoulos, there was a Republican co-panelist who did set him straight. Keith Ellison, you're a supporter of Bernie Sanders. What should happen? Well, I'm with Bernie on this. I mean, we're focused on getting rid of Donald Trump, making sure he is not the president of the United States. Uh, I agree with Bernie. I'm disappointed to read about it. But at the same time, you know, we do have the worst Republican nominee since. George Wallace, we have somebody who is so dangerous in a number of ways, not not the least of which is his attacks on the press and his pulling press credentials. The First Amendment says freedom of the press. He attacks the press regularly. So I'm I'm really kind of focused on on the job at hand, but I am disappointed, but I'm not surprised. But at the same time, you know, I, I just have to keep trudging on, organizing people to turn out the maximum number of votes to defeat Donald Trump. Just the Trump. beginning here in Philadelphia, Congressman Cole, you just came from Cleveland Republican uh, Convention. Uh, was it a success? Well, first, I want to correct my friend. George Wallace was yeah. a proud Democrat and ran for the Democratic nomination. Was on that stage down there. A Thank God he got so. rejected and well, lost. Well, that's, uh, that's yeah. fine, but let's, uh, let's be clear on the record as to whose party belongs. We're red, Nick. We're red. But the Democrats' racist past somehow got sucked down the old memory hole. <laughs> Americans have had enough of supporting companies that hate our values. Tired of compromise? So am I. It's time to switch to Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They are an example of putting the cause ahead of profits, and that's why I'm proud to partner with them. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you access to all three major networks, which means you get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding the left. When you switch over to Patriot Mobile, you're sending a message that you support the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the sanctity of life, and our military vets and our first responder heroes. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes it easy to switch, keep your number, keep your phone, or upgrade. Their team will help you find the best plan for your needs. Just go to PatriotMobile.com slash Larry or call 972-PATRIOT. That's PatriotMobile.com slash Larry or call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation when you use the offer code Larry. Join me and make that switch today. PatriotMobile.com slash Larry. PatriotMobile.com slash Larry or call 972-PATRIOT. Let's talk Bidenomics. Can you believe this happened? On CNN? It's also true right now, Mr. President, that voters by a wide margin trust Trump more on the economy. They say that in polls. And part of the reason for that may be the numbers. And, and, and you're aware of many of these, of course. Uh, the cost of buying a home in the United States is double uh, what it was when you look at your monthly costs from before the pandemic. Real income, when you account for inflation, is actually down since you took office. Economic growth last week, far short of expectations. Consumer confidence, maybe no surprise, is near a two-year low. With less than six months to go to Election Day, are you worried that you're running out of time to turn that around? We've already turned it around. Look, look at the, the Michigan survey. For 65% of American people think they're in good shape economically. They think the nation's not in good shape, but they're personally in good shape. The polling data has been wrong all along. Don't. He'll kill you like a small dog. Let your anger be as a monkey in a piñata. Hiding with the candy, hoping the kids don't break through with the stick. Jared Bernstein, Biden's chair of economic advisors, 
attempts to explain how and why the government prints money. Please tell me this was something generated by AI, except it wasn't. Like you said, they print the dollars, so why, why does the government even borrow? Well, um, the, uh, so the, I mean, again, some of this stuff gets, some of the language that the MM, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money, and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money, and then it lends that money by, uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? They, they, um, they, yeah, they, they, um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, right? Because they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Yeah, so a lot of times, a lot of times, at least to my ear with, with MMT, the, the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing, but there is no question that the government prints money and then it uses that money to, um, uh, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I don't, I can't really talk, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about, like, because it's like, the government clearly prints money, it does it all the time, and it clearly borrows, otherwise we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation, so I don't think there's anything confusing there. Not only was it authentic frontier gibberish, it expressed a courage little seen in this day and age. <laughs> Yikes! Did you know Jared Bernstein is not an economist? That's right, Biden's chair of economic advisors is not an economist. Doesn't mean he's not qualified. After all, he has a bachelor's degree in music, he plays the oboe, a master's degree in social work, and a PhD in social welfare. No degree in economics. I kid you not. Holy sh Now, the late Milton Friedman was not just an economist. He was an economics Nobel laureate. In 1973, Japanese housewives going to market were faced with an unpleasant fact. The cash in their purses seemed to be losing its value. Prices were starting to soar as the awful story of inflation began to unfold once again. The Japanese government knew what to do. What's more, they were prepared to do it. When it was all over, Economists were able to record precisely what had happened. In 1971, the quantity of money started to grow more rapidly. As always happens, inflation wasn't affected for a time. But by late 1972, it started to respond. In early 73, the government reacted. It started to cut monetary growth. But inflation continued to soar for a time. The delayed reaction made 1973 a very tough year of recession. Inflation tumbled only when the government demonstrated its determination to keep monetary growth in check. It took five years to squeeze inflation out of the system. Japan had attained relative stability. Unfortunately, there's no way to avoid the difficult road the Japanese had to follow before they could have both low inflation and a healthy economy. First, they had to live through a recession until slow monetary growth had its delayed effect on inflation. Inflation is just like alcoholism. In both cases, when you start drinking or when you start printing too much money, the good effects come first. The bad effects only come later. That's why in both cases, there's a strong temptation to overdo it, to drink too much and to print too much money. When it comes to the cure, it's the other way around. When you stop drinking or when you stop printing money, the bad effects come first and the good effects only come later. That's why it's so hard to persist with the cure. I'm trying to explain something to you that is terribly important. When we spend more per month or per year than we have an income, you must then dip into the capital, eventually exhausting the capital and, of course, therefore, the income. Do you see what I mean? Mr. Brigham, hmm? this check must be paid. Mr. Graham, I'm trying... at once. I'm trying to explain to you that it is impossible to pay the check because your expenses have exceeded your income to such a point that you have exhausted your capital. Now you have no capital, no income, therefore no funds for the check, you see. 
Don't treat me as though I were a child, Mr. Beckett. No, I'm not. I, I am just... as aware of what it means to have no capital as you are. Oh, good. good. Now, what about this check? Well, are you entirely sure that you really do understand what I mean by capital, Mr. Graham? You see, you've exhausted the capital. I can't cover the check because the check is for $6,000 and you don't have $6,000. In other words, you don't have $60. Come to the point, Beckett. The point, Mr. Graham, is that you don't have any money. The capital and the income are exhausted, and you no longer have any money. I wish there was some other way I could say it. What could I, how could I put it? Uh, that money, you have no capital, you have no income, you have, no, it's only money. It's money, no, you have no money. There's, there's no other way to put it, you see. You mean I have I no money? Yes, that's what I mean. You have no money. Thomas Sowell is another economist you may have heard of. Greece discovered that there, there does come a point where, where, where there is no more money. In Spain, people are already leaving Spain in droves and taking their money out of the, out of the Spanish banks with them. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that you, you can do in the long run and be forced to do is simply print more money. And as they, as they print more money, that is simply a, a hidden form of taxation. I mean, when the Federal Reserve creates money to buy government bonds and keeps the interest rate low in order to make the price of the debt uh, the service low, uh, what that means is that if you have your money put aside in the bank and, 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 and you're getting 1% and the inflation rate is 3%, that means they're taking 2% of your uh, savings uh, every single year and you know how compound interest is. Uh, and, and even under the current conditions, in a $100 bill in 1998 would not buy as much as a $20 bill would have bought in 1960. Well, um, the, uh, so the, I mean, again, some of this stuff gets, some of the language that the, I mean, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money and then it lends that money by, uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? They, they, um, they, yeah, they, they, um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, right? Because they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Yeah, so a lot of times, a lot of times, at least in my year with, with MMT, the, the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing, but there is no question that the government prints money and then it uses that money to, um, uh, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I, don't, I can't really talk, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about. Like, cause it's like, the government clearly prints money, does it all the time, and it clearly borrows. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation. So I don't think there's anything confusing there. Fair to say you simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we, as a central bank, we have the ability to create money uh, digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities, and that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency, and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve banks. Guess what Ronald Reagan majored in? Economics. And I don't think he plays the oboe. This idea that has been uh, spawned here in our country that inflation somehow came upon us like a plague and therefore it's uncontrollable and no one can do anything about it is entirely spurious and it's dangerous to say this to the people. When Mr. Carter became president, inflation was 4.8 percent, as you said. It had been cut in two by President Gerald Ford. It is now running at 12.7 percent. President Carter also has spoken of the new jobs created. Well, we always, with the normal growth in our country and increase in population, increase the number of jobs. But that can't hide the fact that there are 8 million men and women out of work in America today, and 2 million of those lost their jobs in just the last few months. Mr. Carter had also promised that he would not use unemployment as a tool to fight against inflation. And yet his 1980 economic message stated that we would reduce productivity and gross national product and increase unemployment in order to get a handle on inflation because of, in January, at the beginning of the year, it was more than 18 percent. Since then, he has blamed to the people for inflation, OPEC. He's blamed the Federal Reserve System. He has blamed the lack of productivity of the American people. He has then accused the people of living too well and uh, that we must share in scarcity, we must sacrifice and get used to doing with less. We don't have inflation because the people are living too well. We have inflation because the government is living too well. And the last statement 
just a few days ago was a speech to the effect that we have inflation because government revenues have not kept pace with government spending. I see my time is running out here. I'll have to get this down very fast. Yes, you can lick inflation by increasing productivity and by decreasing the cost of government to the place that we have balanced budgets and are no longer running, grinding out printing press money. Thank goodness Mark Hamill, a.k.a. Luke Skywalker, was at the White House press briefing to explain Bidenomics. Okay, how many of you had Mark Hamill will lead the press briefing on your bingo card? Hands? Yeah, me either. And look, I just got to meet the president. He gave me these aviator glasses. Oh, yeah. I love the merch. Love it all. But listen, I just wanted to say I was honored to be asked to come to the White House uh, to meet the president the most legislative, uh, successful president in my lifetime. And, you know, I don't have to go through the list of bipartisan infrastructure law, the PACT Act, the CHIPS Act, all of that inflation, 15 million jobs. Look, it's all good. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. Now, who can argue with that? Uh, the Chinese Communist Party is after control. They don't want anybody to know what they have really done. Our way of life is being censored by the Chinese Communist Party. They said, we get a lot of our money out of China. Is there any way you could make this movie a little bit more attractive to the Chinese? Is it really just about money? Are there other parts at stake? I had friends in Hollywood who said, this will kill your career. You won't get funding. They're afraid of even mentioning one line. Chinese influence was playing into what we see in US films. China said, you can't have that in there. And Hollywood listened. This is insane. This is a joke, right? The Chinese Communist Party followed no rules. What's at stake? The soul of the nation is at stake. We want indoctrination access to America. They could basically take over America without firing a shot because they control access to our minds. People have been brainwashed without knowing it. It's hard out there for black conservatives. Here's a treatment Representative Byron Donalds got for denouncing pro-Hamas protesters. How much is APAC yes, paying you, is. you bastard? That being said, How much is APAC you. paying you, you race traitor? Race traitor? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Take it lying down. Now, what you call me? Okay, you call me in, and we're in Beverly Hills. And let me make sure I get your face, but I'm going to send this to the police department. Come on. You walk back and talk to me. Come on, come on. Let's talk. I'm a Hitler. Okay, then I, I got to get your face on so we can make sure we know who you are. What now? Okay, now I'm a Hitler. Come on, I want to make sure everybody in Beverly Hills knows your face. Don't come on now, don't go, don't turn your back on me now. Because once I turn this camera on, you turn your back on me. So I'm going to follow you now and make sure, like you were following me. I wasn't talking to you, but now you got your back turned. Okay, keep looking. Keep looking. Now you got your back turned. Now when I have a police officer come over here, I'm going to make sure they know your face too. This guy approached me, called me a, called me a Hitler. I know what you're thinking. What would Tom Terrific have done in a similar situation? Yo, homie. 
Is that my briefcase? Is it your briefcase? Yeah, it is. Why? You want it back? What about your wallet? What else you got for me? Huh? So, it could have been a lot worse. Are you afraid of being debanked, and that's a thing, because of your political views or because maybe you are affiliated with the NRA? You need a bank that adheres to your values. Old Glory Bank believes in privacy, security, and liberty. No law-abiding customer will ever get canceled. Our mission is the Constitution. Again, privacy, security, and liberty. And get this. Open an account at oldglorybank.com, and when you get your debit card in the mail, activate it, and you'll get a copy of my book, As Goes California, at a 50% discount. Can you believe it? So, oldglorybank.com, when you get your debit card in the mail, open it, activate it. And when you do, you'll get a copy of As Goes California, My Mission to Rescue the Golden State, at 50% off. Again, oldglorybank.com, that's oldglorybank.com. A few final thoughts. Did the New York governor really say that black kids in the Bronx don't know what a computer is? Young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word a computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. And I want the world open up to all of them. What does this remind me of? Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. He wondered why the gods had sent this thing down to the earth. And last but not least... You've got a friend in me When the road looks rough ahead And you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed You just remember what your old past said Boy, you got a friend in me Hope you enjoyed our show, brought to you by my friends at InvestY Refi. Invest in America like I do. And by Freedom Chat. Speak freely and message privately with Freedom Chat. Download the app today and subscribe to my Freedom Chat channel at Larry Elder for exclusive posts and never-before-seen content. We also want to thank Epic Times, Old Glory Bank, Patriot Mobile, and Birch Gold. And remember, we've got a country to save.